Hello, I'm Rick Williams. And I'm Alicia Vitarelli. Tonight on FYI Philly. This is Cat, Cat, Cat. We are celebrating Broadway. And we traveled the country to get a sneak peek of the shows heading to Philadelphia. Yes! Musicals making their Philly premieres. Theater is poetry. And those back by popular demand. A magical show. Plus, we preview performances by the Philadelphia Orchestra, Ballet, Opera, and Philodenko. Go inside. And check out the dining options, too. Can you fry some chicken? Hey everyone, welcome to FYI Philly. We have a very special show this week. I have a very special co-host and we got dressed up for you. That's right, it's showtime, right? You ready? Always. You know how much I love the theater. This season's Broadway series is one of the biggest yet. There are a dozen blockbuster Broadway productions heading to Philadelphia in 2023. Almost 50 Tony Awards won between them. With a diverse mix of shows. People want to see shows that might challenge them a bit, but they also want to see shows that they know and love. It's not you can kick off the new year with Jagged Little Pill, based on Alanis Morissette's groundbreaking album of the 1990s. They use the songs and create the story of a family in crisis, from addiction to gender issues. Also, Alanis was deeply, deeply involved in the show. It was nominated for 15 Tony Awards and took home a Grammy for Best Musical Theater Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like Alanis Morissette, you're really gonna like the musical Jagged Little Pill. Broadway is known mainly for musicals, but a soldier's play takes the stage in late January. It's about black soldiers in World War II who were willing to go and fight with the hope that when they came back, things would change for them. Eugene Lee was in the show's original production 40 years ago. A production at the Negro Ensemble Company and that included myself, a man named Denzel Washington, a guy named Samuel L. Jackson. This time, he plays Sergeant Vernon C. Waters. Very rough and tough and hard to get along with guy. And when he's murdered? I come in as a lawyer to try to figure this out. There are multiple suspects. Any number of people could have committed this crime. And that's what makes the drama. Philadelphia-born playwright Charles Fuller, who recently passed, won a Pulitzer for the work. It won the Tony Award for Best Revival of Play recently. This play provides an insight into the African-American experience. It shows you a culture that some people don't know about. It also provides some history. And it's the kind of stuff that wakes people up, you know, a year after they've seen this play. It's rich, it's just rich. I think everyone should see this play. If you love the musical Hamilton, you'll want to see 1776 too. Yeah, this is a great show, all female and gender neutral, a multicultural cast, but telling the story of the founding fathers. It's a reimagining of the drafting and signing of the Declaration of Independence. This is for people who are interested in going on a very imaginative journey of what if. God knows the temple. What if we told this story through voices that weren't allowed in the room during this moment. John Adams is being played by a black woman. I play Dr. Josiah Bartlett of New Hampshire. It makes the words of the script come to life in a really different way. In 1776, literally, there were trans people. And so by putting my body in the story, to me, it feels like an act of protest. The show hit Broadway last fall, and the Forest Theater is the first stop on its national tour. I'm super excited about it coming to Philly. I'm an alumnus of the University of the Arts. I actually am a graduate of the University of the Arts. The show takes place in Philadelphia. And while it wrestles with the very foundation of our nation, it's also a musical comedy. And I think those comedic moments drive us into a deeper kind of truth. I think the show is really beautiful, and I hope that people will come and will feel seen. We're six. The Six Wives of Henry VIII take center stage for Women's History Month. The show blew up on Broadway and on social media. When I heard it the first time in the British accents, I was just like, oh, Americans are going to eat this up. So we headed to the nation's capital. We are backstage at the National Theater. For a behind the scenes look at the Tony Award winning costumes. Yes! On full glorious display. It's like almost like gothic architecture. I love it and it's like pretty sexy. The show is a mashup of a Broadway musical and a pop concert. It's basically almost like a sing-off. A girl group of pop stars all trying to claim who's number one in the group. Listen up, let me tell you a story. Each takes the stage with a solo, singing her story. The cool part is we also are each other's backup dancers and backup singers. So we become sort of their entourage, their girl posse. Elevating the wives to more than the powerful man they married. Divorced. And the saying they've become known for. Die. 
divorce, beheaded, died, divorce, beheaded, survived. It's incredibly fun and danceable, but it's also a moving show. I think it represents the unspoken voices in history. Beheaded. We can stand in our power and support each other rather than tear each other down. For a Broadway show, it is short. It's only 80 minutes. With no breaks. You don't even have to go wait in line to pee during intermission. And then you can be out of there and wish for more. It's showtime. Beetlejuice introduces Tim Burton's 1988 cult classic movie to a whole new generation. Welcome to a show about death. And follows the story of Lydia, who is obsessed with death and the afterlife. Because I myself am strange and unusual. And Beetlejuice, a character from the netherworld who's obsessed with the idea of living. And all you gotta do is say my name three times. There's a brand new score along with beloved old songs. The music is just absolutely incredible. Death. It's also visually spectacular. There's over a hundred special effects throughout the show with magic tricks and pyrotechnics and illusions. It's a huge audience favorite coming to the Academy of Music at the end of May. I'm so excited to come to Philadelphia. That's where I grew up going to see musicals when I was little. Say my name. I love this show. It's very funny and weird, but at its core, it's this beautiful message about family and love. I hope people come away not only being moved by the story, but by the sort of wild and zany and sort of off the wall journey we take them on. That beautiful sound. We headed to Hollywood to be transported to the Moulin Rouge in turn of the 20th century Paris. This is where all your dreams come true. Moulin Rouge, the musical, is a revival of the 2001 movie and 10 years in the making. Oh. That's how long it took to get the rights to the 75 pop songs in the score. Covering 160 years of music. The premise is that our lead, Christian, the composer, writes all the greatest love songs ever written. The costumes and set are decadent and lush. We really wanted to make sure we delivered all the spectacle of the film. The story, a mashup of other Broadway musicals. With hidden love and forbidden love. It's such a spectacle, you can't help but be drawn in. Yeah. The artist, Toulouse Lautrec, is a club regular. It is so immersive and ebullient. And there's the wealthy Duke playing the villain. I think I've, I've medley of uh, Rolling Stones. The show spent last summer at LA's historic Pantages Theater. <laughs> this July is coming to Philadelphia's Academy of Music. It's everything you want from a night out. And last month, the Kimmel Cultural Campus made a surprise announcement that Into the Woods is coming to Philadelphia this spring. This is an unheard of circumstance. Once you've begun. The beloved musical by Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine is a mashup of favorite fairy tale characters. Seeing them all together is quite a joy. And then we get to follow them past happily ever after. What dangers? Always the cautionary tale. Be careful what you wish for. Only just we've made a friend. Then. For many, Into the Woods is their very favorite favorite piece of musical theater ever. Director Lear de Bassadet intended this revival to be just a two-week special concert last May. And then there was such overwhelming response that we moved it to Broadway immediately. It's just been announcing extension after extension. It closes this weekend on Broadway, then immediately hits the road on tour with the full Broadway cast. It's literally the same production. Coming to Philadelphia in early April. The piece is just resonating so deeply with the time that we're in. In between. I think in watching it, there's something very healing. You can custom create a subscription package for savings. You can find that link at 6abc.com slash FYI or just scan that QR code on your screen. We go behind the scenes of some fan favorites backed by popular demand. That's when our FYI Philly Broadway special comes right back. This week's FYI Philly is sponsored by the Kimmel Cultural Campus. Welcome back to FYI Philly and our special celebration of this season's Broadway series. You know, it's a great way to kick off the new year. We are at the Academy of Music, the oldest continuously operating opera house in the country. I actually kind of have chills being up on this stage. It's one of three theaters where you can see the fantastic Broadway shows being staged in Philadelphia. The legend of the lion continued to ring. The Lion King celebrated 25 years on Broadway in November. And its majesty has not waned. It changed my whole life because it's such a magical show and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Since Lion King debuted on Broadway in 1997, more than 112 million people have seen the show across 100 cities and 21 countries around the world. Can you feel the love?
In that run, the show has won more than 70 global theatrical awards. It's a huge physical production. The current touring cast includes 54 performers, several from South Africa. They bring such joy. The music and the motifs within the show are part of their culture. The familiar story follows Simba as he tries to find his place within the pride. He sets off on this journey of self-discovery. It's about strength and it's about family. It's a show that really resonates with all generations. Music from Sir Elton John and Sir Tim Rice drive the show. He lives in you. The costumes include masks and puppets that creator Julie Taymor calls the double event. There is a common story, the coming of age. This belongs to every human being in the world. It's absolutely gorgeous. The Lion King comes to Philadelphia this summer, the final show of the Broadway series season with an extended four-week run. A unique and incredible theatrical experience every time you see it. Cats returns this spring. Now and forever. It's another Philadelphia favorite. They sell out almost every performance. People just love seeing it. The Broadway classic puts performers in full feline form. You don't really see the person so much as you do see like more feline. From the intricate design of the makeup that helps create the character to the mesmerizing moves of the actors once they take the stage. They're just like cats. It's a study of movements, just in the way people carry themselves, how they interact with each other. Actor Hank Santos plays the role of Rum Tum Tugger. He sort of is a oppositional, anarchic, type character where he doesn't really follow anyone's rules but his own. The plot features a group of junkyard cats gathering for the annual ball. A big ceremony to see which cat is going to get to go to the heavy side lair and begin their new life. It's a story that actually inspired Hank to become a performer. I saw the tour when I was 11 <laughs> with my dad. It was the first musical I ever saw and now I actually get to do it. It's crazy. The famous Andrew Lloyd Webber songs like Memory and Jellicle Cats are still big hits. Song the music is iconic. I actually remember seeing the Rum Tum Tuggers number. And that was one of those moments where I was like, I want to do that. Like, that is so cool. Why should I die? The rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar returns during Easter season. It's the classic score by Angela Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice. The story of Jesus' last days are told through song. It was a game changer when it first appeared in the late 60s, early 70s. It's not dissimilar to really what happened with Hamilton in that you had a group of contemporary people come together with this historic story and be able to make you listen to it and hear it afresh and anew. This revival of the classic was created in London. At this amazing creative space called Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. And brought to America to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the original, delayed a couple of years by COVID-19. With the pandemic, people's relationship with faith, whether that be religious faith or family or whatever that is, has sort of got deeper. This production puts more emphasis on choreography to tell the story. Dance is one of the oldest forms of expression and dance has been closely linked with religions like throughout history. We use this idea of like blessings and ritual um, to create repetitive movement. And the story seems to resonate for audiences of all religions. It just studies what faith is. People of many different sort of um, heritages of faith can, can really tie into that and can really relate to it. Come From Away is coming back to Philadelphia in February. It's one of our all-time audience favorites. The show just wrapped a five-year run on Broadway, so the touring production is the only way to see this award-winning show. It's a true story that unfolds in the days after the September 11th attacks. When 38 planes and thousands of passengers were stranded in the tiny town of Gander, Newfoundland, the people there opened their homes to them, they opened their hearts to them. Canadian husband and wife team Irene Sankoff and David Hine traveled to Gander for the 10th anniversary of the events in Newfoundland in 2011. We got to meet not only the locals who were there, but also all of these people who had returned 10 years later to reunite with these lifelong friends they had made. They wrote the story based on that trip. Come from away is the term that is used for people who aren't from Newfoundland are called come from aways. One of the highlights is something the creators experienced themselves. There's a ceremony in the show called a screechian. It's how come from aways become fully embraced Newfoundlanders. You have to kiss a codfish, which is really disgusting. I, I would do it again just to be a Newfoundlander. But the heart of the story is what brings fans 
comes back. It's an incredible place to realize that we could be that way in the world, that we could reach out to strangers in that same way and welcome them in. You can find the link for tickets to all of these shows at 6abc.com slash FYR. Just scan that QR code on your screen and it'll take you there as well. We see what's on tap for the orchestra, Phil Danko, ballet and opera when we come right back. Welcome back to this very special FYI Philly. We are at the Academy of Music celebrating the Broadway series being staged right here in Philadelphia. Your voice sounds great on this stage. It does, doesn't it? Like I'm in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> the musicals are a huge draw, but so is the music, dance, and storytelling from the Philadelphia Orchestra and the resident companies of the Kimball Cultural Campus. This is the first full season with the Philadelphia Orchestra partnering with the Kimmel Center to lead the Kimmel Cultural Campus. Now we're one organization together across seven venues, one award-winning orchestra. The new organization has a renewed commitment. Everything has been about promoting greater inclusivity, equity, diversity, and access. The orchestra is elevating underrepresented voices. This is Symphony 4. Like 20th century composer Florence Price. Because of who she was and what she looked like, she didn't get the opportunities. Creating dialogue with the Here Together podcast. Obviously, that's why I do the work I do. And building bridges to diverse communities with the Our City, Your Orchestra concert series. There is a genuine plan to not only implement these changes, but be the model for others to do the same. It's a central part of our mission. In February, the Philadelphia Orchestra is bringing back to the stage a piece by the composer William Dawson. The Negro Folk Symphony that was premiered by the Philadelphia Orchestra and Leopold Stokowski in 1934. In late March, the ensemble will stage the world premiere of composer John Luther Adams' Vespers of the Blessed Earth. It's one of the largest and most personal pieces I've ever composed. The concert, led by music director Yannick Nézé Séguin, is a song to the earth. One of Yannick's missions in life is to bring greater understanding through music of searing issues of our day. When we say we need to save the earth, ultimately what we really need to do is save ourselves. Opera Philadelphia's spring season starts in February with Carmina, Barana, and Credo. Our stage is filled by the musicians of the Opera Philadelphia Orchestra and the singers of the Opera Philadelphia Chorus. It's a big scale production with over a hundred performers on stage. Credo is a piece that has a possibility to transform lives and elevate the spirit. At the end of April, the opera will stage La Boheme, performing the iconic piece backwards. By flipping the order, you really find a way to discover an opera you thought you know in a new way. The Philadelphia Ballet has a diverse slate of shows in 2023. This season we wanted to bring back all of our audiences into the theater. Starting with an intimate performance of three brand new ballets that the company commissioned for its dancers. There are three iconic pieces that you cannot see it anywhere else. For March, Artistic director Angel Correa choreographed a super condensed version of the beloved classic Sleeping Beauty. I tried to make it very dynamic and very easy to watch. The company then taps into its roots with three ballets from George Balanchine. Balanchine is sort of like the father figure of our company. The season wraps up in May with the family-friendly Coppelia, also choreographed by Correa. And it's really a delightful program about a toy shop that comes to life. Philadelphia's spring show is called Moving Beyond Forward. We're ready to show the world what Philadelphia has next to come. It's a program of new works from three of the company's longtime choreographers. Philadelphia has always been a hub for young choreographers, master choreographers to come in and create and grow. There's Tommy Wahid Evans, whose work explores being black and queer and Ray Mercer. As he's just been synonymous with the arts, with theater, with Broadway. They'll be joined by world-renowned choreographer and teacher, Milton Myers, who's been collaborating with Philodenko for decades. Just come out and support, see us, support the Kimmel Center. We know we covered a lot there, but as always, we've posted links to all of those performances on our website. Now, if you're looking for dinner and a show, we check out the food and drink options when we come right back. Very important, and that includes oh, yeah. a new option coming soon. 
Welcome back to FYI Philly and the Academy of Music, mm. an absolute gem on the Kimmel Cultural Campus. So beautiful, and we're celebrating this season's Broadway series, but you know, dinner and a show are two words that naturally go together, right? Naturally. There's a brand new Garces Trading Company slated to open January 18th at the Kimmel Center. We'll be primarily operating during breakfast and lunch, and then during performances. It's designed to be a community gathering spot. You can just stroll in here, have a cup of coffee, get something to drink, have a sandwich, salad. You'll find a full bar for coffee and cocktails, plus sandwiches, salads, and some higher end offerings. You might get beef bourguignon here. You might get, you know, scallop dish. There's also a retail shopping element with items curated by the Iron Chef from plateware to silverware. We're also a bit of a market as well. So if you live in the neighborhood and you want to pick up like a baguette or a croissant. The Kimmel Center is also home to the fine dining restaurant Volver, and Chef Garces has a new class of chefs in residence. We're asking chefs in the community, rising stars, to come and collaborate with us here. These emerging chefs are at Volver for six to eight weeks at a time. They provide recipes to our team. We collaborate. My team executes their food. Our guests here are going to be so we happy so. to have this. Yeah. So. You can order from both the Garces menu and the resident chef's menu. It's an equal 50-50 mix of different items. The chefs also get a financial boost. The funds are always used for their next endeavor and then Garces Foundation matches up to $5,000 per chef. It's nice to work in this beautiful kitchen. Awesome. Chef Chance and Yes is wrapping up his residency. This is our skull though. The program helped him give back to the local Camp Hope for Kids, where he worked after moving to Philadelphia more than a decade ago. Every summer, pretty much since I was like 15, I was working at that camp as a mentor, as a counselor. Chef Juan Lopez Fernandez's stint starts January 11th. He says, Chef Garces gave him his start after he came to the United States from Mexico. Almost 22 years ago, we opened Alma de Cuba together. Yeah, I've been working with him since I was 18. I learned from him a lot. A little more sauce. The exposure will help him promote his restaurant, On Point Bistro. We just do brunch and lunch. Chef Tony Hicks comes to the Volver Kitchen in February. She's a private chef who also does pop-ups. I come to that house, cook in their kitchen, and prepare a meal for them, which is my favorite thing. Her personal focus focus on food insecurity includes plans to teach people how to cook. Not for you to learn all of these French sauces or have this cool technique is so you know how to feed yourself. We're gonna put some duck fat caramel on top. Her dream is to open a community-based culinary center. A big commissary kitchen at the bottom and then teaching kitchen and studios that other artists can rent out. When you come to the Kimmel Cultural Campus, you can get a thirst-quenching spin on cocktails with Broadway-themed drinks available during the run of the show, like the ironic tonic for Jagged Little Pill and the perfect Prosecco for cats. Our thanks to the Kimmel Cultural Campus for hosting us in the historic Academy of Music for letting us up on the stage. Absolutely, we snuck up, right? <laughs> Just a beautiful theater, one of Philadelphia's architectural treasures. And we hope to see you at a show. Have a great week, everyone and Happy New Year.